Good afternoon, dear members. Welcome to another Oxford Union speaker event. Today, we're in I'm honored to have the conversation with Azar Jafari. Azar Jafari became the first female mayor in Afghanistan following her appointment to the mayorship in Nili, De Quinde province in 2008. Whilst a refugee in Iran, Jafari served as editor-in-chief of an Afghan culture magazine and established a school for the children of Afghan refugees. Following her return to Afghanistan, Jafari was a member of the lawyer Jira under the Kazan administration and was the only female co-author member of the new constitution of Afghanistan in 2003. She also authored, I am a working woman, holds a degree in midwifery and has won numerous awards for her commitment to social development. Azra, we're so honored to be joined by you today. Welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. President. And uh, I'm so happy, I'm glad uh, here uh, joining with you and the other <clears throat> webinars. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, say hello to you and to all other participants in this uh, session. And also, I am so glad to uh, invite in the uh, Oxford Union, and this is a good opportunity and good uh, honor for me to uh, having me here tonight. Thank you so much. Why don't you take the floor and introduce yourself to us? Uh, I would like um, a short uh, interview myself. Uh, as, as you mentioned, my name is Azra Jafari. I was born in a middle um, class family in Afghanistan, but I get re a refugee when I was uh, uh, little. So I go to Iran because it was close to a border and we live in, in Gore province. So it is the nearest border for us. It was Iran. So I spent my childhood and uh, a little bit um, my uh, youngest time in, in Iran. But on that time, because we was refugee, it was we have a, have a very hard time there. And then uh, um, after, you know, after um, in 1990s, when the Taliban, they uh, take over Afghanistan uh, in 1996. Uh, so um, a lot of children, they don't have, uh, they they don't allow to go to school so we established and uh, the first uh, uh, school for uh, afghan refugees so uh, I, I i actually i started my uh, social working uh, exactly from that time and then uh, we uh, graduated almost three eight thousand uh, students from this school we had a lot of challenges during these day years, but uh, we, uh, we 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 uh, graduate them. And nowadays, most of them they graduate from high uh, from uh, uh, many colleges and uh, uh, universities with uh, very high uh, degrees, like a uh, masters, doctors, and this is a very uh, honor for me and my uh, colleagues who works for that. And then uh, when I returned to Afghanistan after in 2002, after following the uh, Taliban and then um, US and the other uh, coalition, they came to the um, uh, Afghanistan. So I started uh, um, working for women and uh, um, advocate for women rights and human rights. So, and then I, I, I got involved with the uh, with the um, Louis Jergas, all Louis Jergas in Afghanistan is like a great council. Uh, I was uh, involved with them. The first of them was uh, emergency Louis Jergas. So I was very uh, one of the um, one of the active women in this uh, Jergas. I gathered all women and we trained them, and then uh, we uh, like orientation orientation to them to the what is the Louis Jergas and what 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 is expected. We have from there. And then after that, it was a uh, <clears throat> uh, constitution commission. Uh, we started to stop uh, to re uh, like reform the constitution in Afghanistan. So I was the only woman who was in researcher uh, team and we worked for that almost over one year. And then uh, we, uh, we again, we, uh, 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 take, uh, take uh, another uh, Jorge for uh, like uh, Afghanistan uh, constitution, a lawyer Jorge to uh, like uh, pass this uh, lawyer Jorge, uh, pass this constitution from the lawyer Jorge. And then um, I uh, also um, joined to uh, the same time I work with the uh, like uh, a nonprofit organization 
the name was uh, ERA or Equal Rights Association. Mainly they work for women and women rights. So I worked for them. And then in, 2000, uh, uh, in 2008, uh, after I find out the uh, Neely municipality, it is very new, new uh, city, just, uh, I, I am. I, I, I would like to say I am honored to have uh, this city for the first time. I was the first mayor in this city, and I am the first mayor in the in the whole over Afghanistan history of Afghanistan when I started as the first female mayor. So I went to the Nili as a mayor. So uh, I am. I am sure everybody knows it is not a very easy job for a woman in Afghanistan for the first time be a mayor and also for the city that is not like a city, it is like a big village without, we don't have any city there. So we, I establish, I have to establish that city and make and organize the city without any budget, without any resources. So I started this and uh, during um, that um, job, I have uh, a lot of problem as uh, one of them, for example, it was, uh, you know when when I bring a group of uh, a group of a team or or variants go to the to the Neely, invite them and then bring them to the city to to show them what is the problem how if we have problem so people they think I am a woman I and I used my feminine to bring them to this city so this is like a bad uh, thinking about uh, you know according to the Afghan uh, dominate men uh, uh, things so <laughs> one day. After three months, when I was a mayor there, and then I don't have car, I don't have office, I don't have uh, uh, no budget. So I went back to the Kabul, asked for uh, organization, uh, um, embassies, everybody to help me to start something in, uh, in Nili. So when I come back with a team, it, it was an engineering team. Uh, that uh, with plus to technical, uh, they came with they came with me. Uh, to start it. So when after three days we walking around the city, around the places, everywhere to talk and to, to see how what kind of uh, uh, facilities they can bring it to us or what kind of project they can work with us. But the, the fourth day, the head of uh, uh, religious leaders came to my office and he very angry and very uh, it was very angry. He, he don't want to listen anything. Just talk to me and, and just he shouting. And then he put his finger like that. He said, hey, you as a woman, as a Muslim woman, as a Hazara woman, you came to this city as a mayor. It is OK. Welcome. We welcome you. But we don't want you make any changes in this city. We don't want any project for you from you. As a woman, you make your feminine, you, you use your feminine to bring a, a project for us. So we don't do anything, please. We don't need anything from you. Stop and then just be a, a nice and a gentle and a good uh, woman Muslim. So after this, I, I, I just listened to him because he was very angry and then he can do anything, you know, because they are. Uh, uh, leaders and the religion is very powerful in Afghanistan. So I just listened when he finished it and when he said, okay, thank you so much. We are, I appreciate very much because I know when you came like that angry, it means it is very important for you. This city is very important and the people is important for you. So I would like you share, you come with me and join with me to share your ideas, what the people wants and what the city needs. So I will, uh, uh, trust to whatever you say, and I will um, promise I, I never bring any project that it is against your ideas, against the people benefit. So after that, he went, and then after three months, uh, I want to go to join to some event. And that time, still, I didn't have car. I walked by my uh, secretary and so, and he went as soon as I saw him, I said, okay, just turn around. I want to go at other other way, but he stopped me and said, "Hey, mayor, stop!" <laughs> and I saw, and then on that time, after three months, he appreciated me and he told me, "You know, Mr. Mayor, they they said me, Mr. Mayor, you know, Mr. Mayor, if every other man who was involved in the head of the local uh, departments, government department, if they 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 work at least half of." you know, half person of 
and the work you do for this city. I am sure this city will be very soon, will be uh, very um, uh, perfect with everything and we don't need it anything. But unfortunately, nobody does, doesn't work. But you, we saw you try a lot, we, you try uh, your best and we appreciate from you. Even we, we, we know the progress, it is very low, but we saw you're trying. This is the best things I, I have uh, during my, uh, um, uh, I was a mayor. In Nili. So my nickname is in Nili, it is Mr. Mayor. <laughs> and uh, so during the time I was involved with the women, also I trying to build up a community for women. And also I involved uh, with the uh, schools because I trying to build a city, uh, uh, but without, uh, without uh, you know, a community, you cannot do anything because this city, it is very new. The same of the infrastructure, they need uh, a culture for how to live in, in the city, how they respect to the neighbors, how to respect to the, you know, the community, how to respect and how to work and all these things we needed. So the best way I could, I, I choose the schools. So I, I bring a model of the uh, uh, municipality to the school. So we have 10 municipality school, 10 municipality school. We have mayor, we have board member, we have uh, members. So all the students was responsible to their school. They're trying to whatever they can do in the school. So this is helped me to build a very nice community and bring all of my messages to the people, to the families, and then to the, to the, to the society. And um, I think that was a, a great time that I worked directly with the people for the people. Thank you so much for sharing this incredible story and your journey. I really don't know how to make of your experience as mayor. On one hand, I felt sad and frustrated you being called Mr. Mayor, despite being the first female mayor in Afghanistan. But on the other hand, you took their reaction to you so graciously and being able to work with them. Um, you outlaid the challenges that you faced. There's no budgets, you've got limited resources, no cars with you. What kind of thing have you achieved? What's your proudest achievement by overcoming those obstacles? Uh, you know, when when first I, I went to uh, Nili or choose Nili as a mayor, uh, be, become a mayor there, I knew uh, I have a challenge, a lot of challenges, but I knew I have to work for them and I, I have to uh, fix it for. So for the first time I went to Nili uh, with the, uh, nothing, no budget, no, even I don't have any office. I don't have any car. So I pay my uh, office by my by myself. I paid for one year. And then uh, I talk uh, with the, um, I hired some uh, people. Um, uh, I talked to them as according to the municipality law, the central government are not responsible for the budget for the municipality also. So we have to collect our money from the CDVR and uh, according to the revenues. So um, that thing's all I knew. So I thinking about that, how I can start it. But you know, uh, when you don't start anything for the people, didn't, people they don't pay you tax. They don't pay you anything to uh, you know, collect the revenue. So the, the things I did is first, I made a short term and, uh, and a long term uh, uh, goals for myself. The short term goals was it is how I can involve people with myself with a little budget or no budget so that I can start it with them. The, the, we have a good um, in, the, in the central uh, uh, Afghanistan, we have a good uh, culture people during the winter or uh, uh, spring when the muddy, you know, the uh, roads are muddy or the uh, people they're trying to work together. It's like work com community work. So I use this culture to uh, build or to re, uh, you know, uh, uh, to make uh, a little work with the people. For example, we made uh, a road with the shovel mm -hmm. and we, 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 we paved that with the shovel. And, but how we did it, we made the community, small, small community and we responsible, I responsible them, everybody who are responsible for their road and then they have to make, and then, at, beside that, I, I, I find that a little budget from the uh, like international NGOs like uh, USAID. 
So uh, they support me and then I give to the people to start their work. And this is, uh, is it, it was tough, but, but it started. It, for the start, it was good. And then I, uh, and then I said, most of the uh, problems I had, it was budget, but I knew I can I can work with the people, so that's why I I made it uh, I targeted women as mm -hmm. a, as a, as a as a big fo uh, focal point for me that they can support me. I targeted schools that mm -hmm. I make it you know a good culture started to cooperate people with myself and I I told them my my problems through the school and and then they bring to their home and then is come back to the society. So this is all this um, I try to solve. That's great. Before I go into further questions, I just want to remind everyone who's watching this webinar live, you can ask questions directly through the chat function. There's a Q&A uh, function. You can submit your questions and I can address your question directly to Azura. Um, you've talked to us a lot about your work that you've done as mayor. But so often we've heard about Afghanistan only in the context of war, tragedy, or terrorism. What kind of picture would you paint to us of Afghanistan? What's the real Afghanistan behind the media coverage? Um, for now, it's different than uh, during these 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, during these 20 years, it was a golden time for the Afghan people who works in Afghanistan. And we have a, a lot of opportunities and then we, we used that one. And we had a very good uh, um, resources on that time. So, you know, behind the media, media always they say uh, war, uh, violence and uh, narcotic and a, a very negative news. Mm -hmm. But behind that, we have a, a good culture in Afghanistan. Uh, we Afghanistan, it is a minorities country. It is not dominated by one ethnicity. We have Pashtun, Tajik, Hazara, Uzbek, all, all of them, they have own uh, very rich culture. So um, if you go and live with every, uh, each of them, you can find a very rich culture among them. They respect to elders, they respect to the woman. This, it depends to the where you live it and which uh, category you are mm -hmm. and then uh, for example in Neely the, the, the city I, I was mayor there first when I went there women wasn't involved with the with the with the government with the offices with the school with but still we have a, a, a they have a good culture about the respect for women and they had uh, like a democracy it's, you know women work with men uh, shoulder by shoulder in the in the farms and then when, but when I went there and then people saw me as a role model, they started to get more education. We helped them to, and we, we trained them and we, uh, we and I, I tried to make an opportunity for them to take advantage of all these things. And when I leave the Ikundi, the Ikundi was one of the uh, uh, provinces that the woman was the most uh, uh, participate in the high level position in that in the, in this. So we have we have a good culture. We have respect for the women. We have a democracy. We had uh, uh, resources. We had all of these things, and people has a real and uh, normal life. Yeah, you've mentioned that women might be treated differently across Afghanistan because of the cultural difference. Mm -hmm. The Taliban spokesperson has promised they're going to respect women, women's right. Do you trust them or should we believe them they are able to change? Uh, unfortunately, uh, um, if everybody who uh, saw uh, Taliban during the 1996, what happened during five years they was in Afghanistan involved, and then all this during the 20 years. Mm -hmm. I, a person as a woman who works in, in, in the, uh, at least uh, six years at the, at the, as a mayor in Afghanistan. But I saw how the, they had the behavior with the, with the woman. They don't believe a woman as a human. They don't, you know, uh, unfortunately they think women, it is like a material for them. 
they think like that and then um, they act like also that they don't believe women can be a leader they don't believe women can be uh, thinking about anything just the only things is said okay women it is a, a, a material we when we need it we use it when we don't just throw them out and then I cannot, I cannot believe to that kind of, um, and then also, uh, unfortunately, Taliban has a very radical ideology about the Islam. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they used or they, they abused uh, even Islam against the woman also. They defini defi defined Islam according to their ideas. And then they trying to keep them and then uh, play this one all the all these years even right now they trying a lot to show to the international uh, uh, countries uh, in front of media we are changed you know always they said we, we got changed but they are not got changed if you go behind the media you can see how they behave now the, this uh, girls cannot go to school women cannot go to office and um, even the university they cannot go so in behind the office, uh, behind the camera, they beat women and they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 the same action they have in 1996 until, 90, until 2001. So this, they are the same people, they don't get changed, but the only things they change is, uh, might be two, three people, at least 5% of the people who is in the leader is a leadership, okay? Mm -hmm. They might be a little bit, they, they don't change, but they trying to be acting as a change. But but all 90% is the same people who live with them, who work, and they, unfortunately, they all of them train since they are children. And then they they, they, they train a very radical and they it's, it, and illiterate people. So it is difficult to trust them. Mm -hmm. It's sad to know this is the truth, especially heartbreaking to hear this from you. But it's so brave of you to speak out and still doing the thing you're doing now. Um, as you may know, uh, this week, in the past week in the UK, we have a very senior member of parliament uh, who were attacked and got killed, lost his life, which led to the question about the safety of the political class in this country. And having seen firsthand everyday danger in Afghanistan, being not just a politician, but a female politician, what made you continue to do the work that you were doing? Um, you know, I, since I was a teenager, I worked, I, I, I was involved with my community, my Afghans. You know, when I was in 17 years old, uh, I, I, I started establish this school for the children. I was involved with the refugee and then the problem with, the, with my people. So I read my history, Afghan history, how is the, how, how it was and how it is right now. I live in this country at least uh, 14, 12, 12 years after the Taliban. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of this, and I saw, I feel all the woman pain and the woman needs, and the, I know how the women in Afghanistan, they have, right, they are right, right now, how they are and how they, they don't have access to anything, especially right now. People, you know, I received maybe hundreds of uh, emails every day. They ask me to help them, but I cannot do. But the, the things I do is whatever I can, I try to still uh, give them hope. Mm -hmm. Even we are far from Afghanistan, but we thinking about them, we trying to help them, whatever, any kind of way. For example, right now, the Taliban banned the uh, uh, high school for the student, for the uh, girls, like uh, they cannot go over sixth uh, grade. So we, me and other women and men who believes the woman rights and who believes the woman have right to educate. We started a group or, or like a online um, a group to start an uh, online school for them. Uh, then, but I, I am sure we have a lot of challenges in this, but uh, we started and then we talk during the working, we uh, thinking for the people, for the woman who is far from 
you know, Kabul or in the, uh, in the far area, they don't have access to the internet or something. So we will, we have to start it and then we're thinking about that. But the things is what involved me uh, to continue. I, I, I know it is danger and dangerous it's still in US. I am here, but I am sure it's a lot of radicals people are there around here. But, uh, but the only thing is I am belongs that, that, that country. I am a woman who feel uh, pain, who feel uh, discrimination, who feels, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, all these things. This, this, is, this is what I, I thinking it is my responsibility to, because if I can do something for the people who cannot, so why, why not, I have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, as a young woman, you possibly represent the future of Afghanistan. Yet we've seen that the modern Taliban comprises of more radicalized young men fighting against some of the more pragmatic older generation of Taliban members. Is this a mistake to say the younger generation, the youth in Afghanistan, naturally progressive? Or is there a bigger cultural divide about being progressive? Uh you mean uh, the young generation during this 20 years they was now still uh i am sure uh, you know during 10 20 years young we raised a very um uh, democrat most of them when when they raised it, it, it was a very uh, in a democrat country it was uh, full of uh, uh, freedom we have a lot of uh, freedom of speech media everything they, they progressed and they changed their uh, uh, a very good value. Uh, um, uh, points in, in the in whole, whole 20 years, and I am sure even the Taliban right now, they uh, took over Afghanistan, but this young generation, they not they not you know, they, they don't stop. They know how to how to uh, fighting against all this violence. I, I, they know how to use the, the right for to progress. So uh, the good things is right now is uh, uh, the new generation involved with technology and the technology, it is a best way to use their, their uh, knowledge, their talent, they, they get progress and they contacted with the, with the, with the out, you know, with the like a world out of Afghanistan. So mm -hmm. this is makes the new generation to don't stop. They trying to get more and more involved with the, even it is a risk, you know, um, uh, for example, when Taliban took over, even right now with the Taliban in the street, women and the young generation and the boys, young boys, they go to the street to demonstrate against their rights. This is not a, a very easy thing. You know, this Taliban, they, they are not um, believed to any, any humanity, humanity or human rights. So they can shoot any second they want, you know? So they cannot stop anybody, them, from with the weapon, but they still go to go and fight for their rights. So this is means the new generation, they use the right things, especially they use the um, connection with the, with the technology and they trying to get more involved with the, with the, with the uh, world, with the world. And then they get, uh, um, uh, they, they grow up uh, across the, mm -hmm. across the, the um, international or global grow. So I think this is a good uh, opportunity, even for now the Taliban um, took over, but they can, they trying to be, to be more progress, no, no stop, and they don't give up for that one. Well, if we zoom out to the international stage, looking at the situation in Afghanistan now, a simple question to you is, has the world failed Afghanistan? If so, what can the world do to make up for their mistake? Uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, uh, especially it was a big shock for the Afghan people, especially for the new new generation that they, they nobody thinks the uh, international communities, international countries, or uh, they they leave behind them like very easy in in, in one second. And then, uh, but, but now the new generation also, they know the only way they can't, 
make uh, their own way to go out of this big challenge. It is contacted to with 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 the with the um, uh, with the world. Mm -hmm. You know, the politics is different than technology. Politics is different than a knowledge. So they trying to educate, they trying to get knowledge, they trying to uh, uh, work, uh, you know, equal with others and they, it is difficult for them. You know, it is difficult. You as a, for example, 25 years old boy or girls in Afghanistan, you cannot compare a, a 25 years old in US or UK, mm -hmm. but still they trying to find their way how they can go out of this uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And then uh, even they know the international, uh, they left behind and they made a policy, a, a play. It was a, a big game when they, they lived Afghanistan without, you know, they, they just lived them 20 years, 20 years of working, 20 years training, 20 years, one generation we raised in 20 years. And then they just, they leave them behind and said, goodbye, we you can figure out how you can solve your problem. This is a big mistake, but new generation, they try to find how they can get out of this mistake, you know, now, and then they find out, they find out they cannot trust anymore to the world, to the international country. When they come in, I said, okay, now everything it is okay until we want, they can know. Now they understand this is every other countries, if they come to Afghanistan, they wanna make deal with them. This, is, this should be like the same as 20 years. They work, they pay they everything, and then they left. So for this time, I think they will be more care careful how they trying to start to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Well, given your message, I think it really means the changes are only taking place on a long-term basis and it mm -hmm. takes a long time to uh, effect actual change. Yeah. Um, so things like nation building or this kind of long-term planning, do you think the reason they fail is because a lot of democracies having this short-term, really short-sighted vision of how, th how things can be changed. Mm. Um, I think what happened in Afghanistan is not because of democracy. The things that happened in Afghanistan, it was because of the ethnicity. Mm -hmm. I told uh, Afghanistan is a country, is a country built it by ethnicities, minorities. All minorities become a nation, okay? But in this, in this situation, unfortunately, I cannot say 100% Taliban are Pashtuns, but I can say majority of them are Pashtuns. And the problem is in Afghanistan, mostly it's like ethnicity ideas. They, you know, as, as in, in, in US, for example, uh, the previous president always, he said, Lay, uh, let's make America again, uh, great again. Mm -hmm. This is the same happen in Afghanistan. Our Pashtuns, our Pashtuns people, they think if, because the majority of Taliban are Pashtuns, if we support them and take over Afghanistan, so we can push back other minorities. This is the, I think this is the one of the, not, not the main, but one of the main point that support the Taliban to took over Afghanistan because people who like Hamid Karzai, what Ashraf Ghani, even Khalilzad, they support them and they make a, a, a play, a, a surface for the Taliban to come and over to Afghanistan. It wasn't easy. They, it is what it. This plan is started. I think is started since uh, 2013 until 2020, and then in 2020 is wrap up everything. And now the things, the Afghanistan, it is great right now because all took over by one ethnicity. Okay, so looking to the future, are you <laughs> optimistic about the future of Afghanistan? Uh, I think Afghanistan uh, during these 20 years is changed. The people are changed. 
-hmm. and uh, the, their, uh, their view for future of Afghanistan are changed. You know, as you see, the women are get changed. They not accepted what happened in Afghanistan right now. They trying to fight for their right. So people in Afghanistan also are get changed. They never accepted what have whatever you know Afghanistan for in Taliban should be in power in, forever in Afghanistan. They trying to negotiate or even they fight for their right to get back Afghanistan for all people in Afghanistan, for all minorities, for all ethnicities. And, and, and Afghanistan should be a place for living to all, uh, all people who belongs to that. Mm -hmm. um, looking at yourself and your experiences, you have been a refugee yourself. Uh, looking at the refugee crisis across the world, do you think the Western world has done enough to help with the refugee crisis? Uh, not unfortunately. I, I have, uh, I become two times refugee. Uh, refugee. One uh, during the Soviet, Soviet Union in Afghanistan, the war is camped. And then I, I, I flew to uh, Iran. I was until uh, finished my high school there. So I have, uh, unfortunately, as a refugee, I have a very, very much bad uh, uh, um, uh, memories and some good memories also. And now I, I become again a refugee in, in, in uh, US. When I become a refugee, I, I put every honor, every uh, uh, principle, everything I have in my Afghanistan, I, I, I put it. And I come back here, I came here as a, exactly started like a, like a, like a uh, ordinary person. I started working with like a cashier. I started working and started slowly, slowly. And um, unfortunately about the refugee crisis now, uh, no, the, the, the countries, they can, they are not done with, with, with like this uh, program uh, because I don't know, they, they wasn't ready for that. You know, when you bring it one, in, in, among the one months, 100, almost 140 or almost 200,000 200, people with children, women, and without any, uh, you know, um, uh, they are not ready for, and then when just bring them to the to the camp. Now, after one month, they know how much a problem they have with these refugees. They cannot uh, involve with anything, and they have you know they have documentation problem, they have food problem, they have clothing, they, they have culture. You know the for example economy, culture, everything are problem for them right now. And the other things, it just just. Uh, Afghanistan people are not just in these 200,000 people. We have 36 million in Afghanistan and all of them, they, they wanna take, o take over from, they, they come from, go out from Afghanistan. So they cannot be, uh, I think the, uh, the, the world should be thinking about how settle people in Afghanistan how involved uh, the government, not the Taliban, how they, 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 they make a, a government in Afghanistan to um, people trust to them and to settle in, in, that Afghan, in, in that country. And then they bring them back, all the, the um, mm -hmm. refugees back to Afghanistan. They work for them. The, the, you know, after 2021, mm -hmm. when uh, all the countries go to Afghanistan to start uh, you know, a new country, new government for Afghanistan, hope was came back to Afghanistan. Everybody, every most of the refugees came, they go back to Afghanistan for work. And during this all the 20 years, everybody was very hopeful. This country will be, you know, grow up in economy, grow up in the uh, uh, industry, in every single things they will grow up. But now after 20 years, they, they collapse. And, and now, most of the people, they want to be immigrant. And this is a big challenge for the world. They have to make a, a, a good program and how they can manage of that. They can invite all of the refugees or they, 
they made some problem program or some progress inside Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adra. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective and your experiences. Now we've got some questions, uh, some time for questions from our members. If you have questions, please do use the Q&A function to submit the questions. So the first question from Desi, uh, who asked, what is your message to young girls and women who would like to become politicians and leaders, but live in a country that does not have equal women's rights? Um, my message is the freedom is not the things people give you as a gift or your right, human rights. They, nobody give you as a gift. We have to fight for that. And then as much as you try and as much as you fight, you will get more. Like we had in Afghanistan, we're fighting a lot. And then we got, you know, we had the, uh, after, after, uh, after the Taliban, we had ministers, we had uh, uh, governors, we had uh, uh, in, uh, mayors, we had uh, um, a district uh, governor. So we have a lot of people involved in, in politician, even we have member par parliament members. So, but all of them, they fight for that one. And then they are trying to uh, get educate and, uh, and, and, and get themselves in power. So uh, I think this is the message that they have to fight for whatever they, they want to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Actually, the second question is quite related to the first one. Um, it's about your career, the career that you've pursued. What advice would you give to those people who want to pursue a career like yours, but that would make them a target for extremists of all kinds. You know, the current political environment in anywhere in the world is very divisive and polarizing. Um, I think we shouldn't be afraid of the uh, fighting for our rights as a woman, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we have to be very cautious. It doesn't mean, uh, we shouldn't be afraid. It doesn't mean you go stand in front of the extremists and then they said, okay, I looking, I, I, I need my, my, my right but I wanna fight for that one and then they kill you. No, this is not. I, I think the same as you have to be very cautious, but you have to fight for that one. And then you have to find in which way you can fight. Sometimes you can go in the, you know, in the place, like for example, when I, come, when I was in Afghanistan, in, in Iran. So when I come back to Afghanistan, I started working with the people. But since when the Taliban treat me for, for my life, so I think it wasn't good. I say, okay, just kill me. No, because my life, it is value for me. And I have to, I, 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 I'm, I thinking if I died, one person is died as it's finished. But if I continue living, I can uh, train, I can work with the other women. And in the state of me, maybe tens of women they can raise their voice and they, they can go and work with them. That's why I came to US and then still I working with the women, I involved with them. And now all these women who demonstrate in Afghanistan, we support them, the, not, not like directly, but uh, we talk about them, we talk about their rights, we encourage them, uh, we are all women and we have to stay for the for our right and it is very difficult but we have to stay mm -hmm. great well the next question is from darian darian asked what are your thoughts on universal rights do you think they are a western invention that was being transplanted into alien foreign cultures or that they are rights which should be open to all regardless of our geography culture or tradition um, I think uh, the right is not belongs to the uh, to the one country or uh, west or east. Mm. Uh, you as a human, you have the same right. You have to eat, you have to eat. You have to work. You have to educate. Doesn't matter where you live, and uh, in in which geographical place you you live, or which uh, religious you are belongs or you from which country you are. So right, it is right. And the, for example, when we talk about women rights, women rights everywhere is the same, it is right, but it's different. For example, women rights, fighting for women rights in US is much more different than fighting 
uh, uh, for women rights in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, we fight for education. We fight for, um, they accept us as a human, but when we here, we're fighting, for example, for rights, not for, for education. We, uh, for example, uh, fighting for the equal payment, for example, like that. So this is uh, the, this is the right is not the same, like uh, not equal. For example, you cannot say everywhere is the same as we have to, but right is right everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you've mentioned the right to education. So I just want to pick up on this. Previously, you said across Afghanistan, women were treated differently depending on which region, which geographical area that you're in. What about education inequality? And what are the biggest obstacles to achieve this free education for all? Oh, this is a big challenges in, 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 in even in uh, big uh, countries like Afghan, like uh, US, like UK. I saw many, mm -hmm. especially many refugees students. They, mm -hmm. they, they, um, they have a problem about the continued education because they cannot pay. So I think the, uh, for that one, the, uh, the people who are involved in that case, for example, the, uh, the government should, be, should have some very clear uh, programs for the people who cannot pay and who cannot go to school. But unfortunately, we have a lot of we have a lot of rule and regulation, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe tons of uh, rule, law, and regulation in in many countries. If you know all of them, maybe you can find one one article, then your children go to school for free. But everybody cannot read all these things. So I think the government should be make a little easier at least. For the and now, I think I think it is very easy. Uh, they say, for example, free education until uh, 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 diploma. But now I think they need at least until undergraduate, because the 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 um, let's say the standard is is changed right now. Mm -hmm. For the people who graduate from diploma, it is like a completely illiterate. illiterate. So now we need that we need that children at least finish their college, and mm -hmm. this is a big challenge for the for the for the children who don't have enough money to participate. And the and the uh, and, and in, uh, in, unfortunately in U.S. most of the children they uh, they finished uh, at least after two years college they don't continue because they struggle with the payment. Mm -hmm. I've got a question from Emily. Emily has asked, uh, earlier in your introduction, you've mentioned that you came from a middle-class family background. How much do you think your upbringing and your family affected and influenced your career choice? Uh, I think my father, it was one of the person who makes me involved more in this situation. When I was in, uh, I remember when I was in, uh, fifth grade, my father brings uh, uh, books for me. It, at that time, it was very heavy to me to understand, but still, he brought uh, uh, books from Afghanistan, especially about the history of Afghanistan. And he said and asked me to read for him. And I read it for him. And we, after that, we discuss about what I read and what I understand. This is makes me a little more uh, recognize what I, who I am and then from where I, I came. And then still the, uh, um, uh, step by step, I get involved and my family was even, they was very um, in, in middle class, but they was very uh, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledgeable uh, people. They, uh, we have right as a, as a girls, I was very free. I can do any, I, I just say very, uh, my ideas I can share uh, with everybody. We, we sit in the, you know, in a family, we, we just discuss about a big, big uh, decision. So this is, this is makes me a little more confident when I get grow up, for example, when I was 17, 
I find out, okay, why I, I go to school, but the, these children, they cannot go to school. What is the difference between me and he or she? And then I figured out, okay, we are Afghan, but I have a small car, the United Nations, they give it UNCR, they give it to us. So because of that, I can go to school, but they don't have, and they don't can. But I said, okay, they have to go to school. And then we started with other, uh, we started with the 20 children, 20 children in my house. We teach them and then the family, you know, when, when you say talking about this family with the other, with the other, and then after 20, it gets 30, and then said, sorry, we don't have any, enough space, what should we do? And then the family, this family, they rent a house for four, uh, four uh, rooms. And then we started to teach more, more, and more. And then after one year, I had 1,200 students in four shifts. Wow, your father must be very proud of your achievements. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, because uh, when, when I saw them and then when I become a mayor, they send me email as a, as a doctor, as a master. I said, oh my God, <laughs> this is a big achievement, yeah. That, that's great. Uh, having had a, such a successful career, being the first um, female mayor of Afghanistan. Do you feel a sense of history, a kind of a mission falls upon you to be the first person to inspire more young people, especially girls, to do things like what you've done? Sure. Uh, you know, when I went as, as, as a mayor, as a woman mayor, even government, they don't believe I continue my work as a mayor. Because when I went to Daikundi, uh, then after two months, when I come back, to uh, central uh, government, to Kabul, to ask them if they please give me some budget because of the, uh, I, I mentioned because of the uh, law, municipality should have own budget, but I don't have budget. I asked them if you support me some budget or if even they, uh, give me some loan, you know, then I can give back to the government. But the, the um, IDLG or uh, independent directorate of local governance told me, you know what, you still not official for us because we didn't announce you as a mayor. So first, I wanna make sure you wanna stay in your position. Are you sure you, uh, you wanna be a mayor exactly? You know, first we sent you, we, we wanna say, we wanna see how is your reaction? So now you came back during this month, what do you think? Do you think you can continue? See, this is the, the thing and the way Afghanistan, even in government, they, uh, they, they think about women. So mm -hmm. after that, I said, when I accepted as become as a mayor, even from, even uh, from, uh, you know, from the sky, come soon in a state of rain, I will be mayor and I continue. After that, they announced we, uh, we um, um, not selected, elected. Mm -hmm. A mayor, a female mayor in Afghanistan. Uh, after two months, people they know I am, <laughs> I, I am existed. <laughs> so, and then what I did in 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 Daikundi, I think it was a big achievement for, especially for women, because after me, I saw women they acting like me, they walking like me, even they wearing clothes like me. So this is a big, big, big achievement. Uh, uh, before that, people, uh, women, they take your, you know, a scarf in here and talk with women, with men, or they don't go in, in the public for we're talking with them. But after that, we train them, I, I make opportunity for them, I make, uh, I, I mm, built a park for them, I built a, a business a market for them, and then I train them, they work even in the market. So, mm -hmm. and then I said, when I leave, uh, I left uh, Neely, uh, Daikundi was the most, the, one of the uh um what the name oh, province one of the province that the most women involved in the politics and in the governance wow and, and the more than more than 50 percent more than 50 percent student was woman mm -hmm. well, it's still... Sorry, more than 50 percent yeah it was still disappointing to hear them asking you whether you want to continue you know that kind of question will not be asked to a man yeah, I bet they were very surprised. They were all shocked when you said yes, yes, of you want course. to. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't expected. They asked me like this question because after two months, 
I pay, I pay for myself to, you know, I pay uh, myself from my pocket to my office. I work, um, I, I walking all over places. I walk in two, three hours in the, in the, in, in, during the day to go from this place to other place. And then when I come back in the state, they, they say, hey, I want to help you as a woman. Thank you, you go there. And then we, we support you. They said, oh, are you sure you want to continue? This is a very, very disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, one final question from me. I asked this question to all the speakers who came to address to us, who speak to us this term, is now looking back at what you have achieved, what would you say to your 20-year-old self? What advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Um, I think we should we should keep continue even we have in we even we are in hard situation right now. I am sure Afghanistan is not gonna stay like that. I am sure we can find if we work, we fight, and we think about how we can go out of this uh, crisis. So we, I, I think, in a bright future for Afghanistan and for uh, a woman because I know this woman is got change and they fight and they, they trying to uh, find their way, they write and they, they, they still stand for that. And we stand for Afghan women too. Great, well, I'm glad to end this event on this optimistic note. Azra Jafari, thank you so much for joining us. And your talk is truly inspirational and to all the best of Afghanistan's future. Thank you.